Um, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Hubert. I'm going to be talking about Whale Builder, uh, which is a tool that I wrote for building packages using Docker. Um, so, uh, probably most of you know this already, but um, it's generally not a good idea to build packages on your working environment. Um, you know, when I, when I first started building packages, um, you know, it was about 15 years ago or so, I would just, you know, uh, do the packaging, and then I would just do a dpackage build, build package right in that directory, and then it would spit out a, a package. And, you know, for those packages that I was doing back then, it, it worked fairly, f it worked fine. But, um, you know, there are, there are problems with that. Um, depending on what packages you're building, um, you know, you might have, <laughs> you might try to build packages that have conflicting build requirements. And then so, you know, you don't want to be constantly installing packages, uninstalling packages, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> you also want to make sure your build depends are correct. Um, because if you're just building packages on your main computer, you might have packages installed um, that, your, that your package needs, but that you've forgotten to include in your build depends. Um, some software will compile differently depending on what packages you have installed. Um, so a lot of packages will detect which libraries you have uh, installed, and if you have certain libraries, then they'll enable certain features. Um, or you might want to build for a different release than what you have. Um, so for example, if um, you're running stable on, uh, <coughs> on your computer and you want to uh, compile something for, um, I don't know, old stable backports or for unstable, um, then it might require different libraries than, uh, than what you have installed. So the solution, of course, is to build your packages in a separate, uh, isolated environment, uh, and hopefully one that's minimal. Uh, that is, it only contains uh, the packages that you've specified in your build depends plus uh, build essential. Uh, so how do you do that? There are various tools uh, available for doing that. There's sbuild, uh, pbuilder, and cowbuilder. Uh, my own tool, which is whalebuilder, and uh, travis.debian.net is uh, slightly different from these tools, um, but I'm mentioning it, it as well because um, because it, it uses kind of the same idea. Um, and I know there's other tools as well out there. So with, you know, with pbuilder and cowbuilder already out there and sbuild, why did I write whalebuilder? Um, pbuilder for me um, was just taking too long, um, especially on my computer, which is still uses an, an old hard disk drive. It's five years old. Um, you know, it, it, so pbuilder, for those of you don't, who don't know, it um, creates a, um, a minimal environment. Uh, it stores it on your disk uh, either as a tarball if you're using pbuilder or as a directory if you're using cowbuilder. Uh, and then it copies, when you tell it to build a package, it copies that into a build directory and installs build dependencies. Um, and then it builds your package in that uh, directory as a chroot. 
Uh, but that all takes time. Um, it takes time to copy, and it also takes time to install the build dependencies over and over. So, for example, I have a, I maintain a package called NoWeb, which build depends on Tech, li Tech Live, which is fairly large. But once all the build dependencies are installed, you know, it, it only takes about two minutes uh, to build, whereas building the, uh, installing the build dependencies, um, I haven't timed it, but it's like over 15 minutes. And you know, if I have a bug in there that um, you know, it's happened before, I tried something to fix the bug, it didn't work. Um, so I have to rebuild the package again. So I have to wait for you know, Tech Live to install over again. Um, and then you know, maybe it still doesn't work, so I try something else. And you know, over and over, I have to wait for uh, PBuilder to, to do all this stuff again. So Whale Builder is different because it's, it uses Docker, and Docker uses union file systems. I'll talk about this a bit later. Um, but basically, it means that you don't need to copy stuff. Um, it just, uh, there's support in the kernel for, um, for union file systems, uh, where you basically say, I want this to be my base directory, and I'm going to uh, write stuff on top of it, but it's not going to touch the base directory. It's going to write it into some other location. So you can um, use that same base directory uh, over and over without copying and uh, without changing it. Uh, Whale Builder also creates re reusable images with the build, build dependencies already installed. So that means I don't have to keep on installing Tech Live because I already have an image that has Tech Live installed. Uh, Docker also gives us some extra features for free. So it can create a build environment that doesn't have any network access. Um, so you know, there's a lot of software out there these days that will, uh, when you try to build it, it will try to fetch stuff from the internet, um, which you know, we, we're not allowed to do in Debian uh, because we need to have all the build dependencies within Debian itself. So by making sure that the build environment doesn't have network access, um, we can be sure that that we're not fetching uh, stuff from the internet when we're building the package. Um, it can also check for file system changes outside the build tree. So for example, if your uh, build creates a temporary file or, uh, or it makes a configuration file somewhere, then, um, uh, then it will tell you uh, or you can ask Docker, what have I changed in this, uh, in this directory? And it won't tell you. Um, so I will just do a quick demo of those. Um, So I've created a couple of packages. Oh, actually, I should, before I do that, I'll just show you what it does. Um, this is the Debian rules file. So all it does is when it tries to build, it does an app get download of whale builder. So it tries to fetch the whale builder source. Oh, 
That's, that's just because I wrote the wrong thing. There we go. So uh, basically what it does um, while we're waiting for it to run is it uh, creates um, this package here, uh, which is just a dummy package that depends on uh, the build dependencies for the package that I want to build. Uh, so it installs that in the Docker image. Of course. Oh, OK. So it installs that in the Docker image, and then it runs an app get update and an app get install dash f, which will install all the de dependencies for that package. Um, for this, so this package in particular doesn't have any um, build dependencies, so it's just going to do the app get update and then do nothing. Um, and then it's just going to copy whale builder. And then now it's going to try to build the package. Right, so here now it's trying to do an app get download of whale builder and then it says it can't find dev.debian.org uh, and that's because um, that's because Docker has told it not to have network access and it's not because of flaky conference Wi-Fi. Um, I'll also show if I try to do it do that again, then this time, Docker has cached oops. Docker has cached the results of the previous run, so it doesn't do oops. Ah. It doesn't isn't it doesn't do the whole app get update and install step because it's cached the results. So if I try to build if I fix it and then try to rebuild it again then it will just go jump straight to the um, it will just jump straight to the uh, package building step. Um, and this is the oh do a quick demo of um, so the build step for this um, for this package it just touches some config file outside of the build tree and then so docker or will builder tells us detected file system changes outside the build tree and then it tells us what file is there okay um so just a very high level overview of how Docker works. Um, it has two basic components, images and containers. Images is like a, just a base file system, uh, and it has layers. So you start with a base layer, and then you say, now I want to add these files on top of it. And then you can add files on top of that, or any arbitrary file system change on top of that. And then so it uses a kernel module to s when you try to access the file system, it first looks at the top layer, sees if that top layer says what that file is. If it doesn't find it there, then it goes to the next layer and so forth. Uh, and a container is basically a running instance of an image. And it's isolated from the rest of the system in certain ways. And kind of a hand-wavy description is it's 
more isolated than a CH root and less isolated than a VM. Uh, so Whale Builder, as we saw, it starts with a uh, base system image, and you can either create your own or download a pre-built image. Um, and then it creates a new image with only the build dependencies installed, and then it builds the package, and then it copies the result out of Docker. Um, so to create an image, uh, you use this command, Whale Builder Create. Um, and you can either base it off of an existing Docker image, which you either pull from uh, somewhere on the internet or that you uh, build locally. Uh, you can specify the distribution that you want, so either SID or testing or whatever. Uh, and then you give it a name. Um, there has been questions for whether you can trust Docker images that you didn't build yourself. So um, it might be a good idea to use uh, Dev Bootstrap, especially since you, know, you only need to do that once. And a fun story, on Sunday I was uh, preparing for this talk. I was looking at my images and I noticed, you know, my base image is a bit out of date, so you know, I should probably rebuild it. Um, so I tried using Deb Bootstrap, and then it, it broke. So um, I frantically tried to fix the bug, and it should be fixed in Whale Builder 0 0.5, um, which I just uploaded yesterday. Um, so if your base image is out of date, you can either create a new one or use Whale Builder Update, which basically just in, does an app get update and up up, app get dist upgrade uh, and then creates a new image based on that. Uh, but even if you just do an update, it's probably a good idea to rebuild occasionally uh, or else your base image, one thing is your base image will continue to grow uh, because you have a bunch of layers and each layer um, takes up space. Uh, so. Um, even if, you know, the whole th thing gives you, um, you know, a certain amount of data, your other layers uh, add um, disk usage. Um, and also, just so you don't accumulate obsolete packages. Um, I have some pre-built base images, um, so if you use Whale Builder slash Debian, then it will pull those images from uh, Docker Hub. I have SID, unsta SID testing, stable, um, old stable, I think. Um, and I'm going to make a bunch of images as well. Um, but again, you may or may not want to trust those images. It's, it's up to you. Um, as we saw before, um, this is how you build a package. Um, if you have, um, so when you build a package, then uh, Whale Builder will save the dependency image and will give it a specific name. And you can tell it, you can force it to use that uh, previously built image instead of building a new one, um, and this is how you do that. You just specify the image name and you say no install depends. If the build fails, then Whale Builder does not remove the container. <sighs> Sorry, wrong, wrong command. Okay, that was not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to remove the, <laughs> the container so that you can, you can inspect it with uh, either Docker export, which will give you a tarball, or Docker commit, which will create an image. Um, what I'd really like to do is to just jump into that container but I, I can't figure out how to do that because it's, it's a stopped container and Docker doesn't 
allow me to do that. So if there's any Docker gurus out there, um, then, then let me know. Uh, unfortunately, I'm running out of time. Um, so I will have to pick and choose which ones of these to talk about. Um, uh, I think this one's interesting. So say you have um, a bunch of packages that have similar build dependencies. So you don't have to have your base package being like a completely minimal Debian uh, plus build essential image. You can add stuff into it. So for example, if you maintain a bunch of Qt packages that all, um, you know, they'll all build depend on Qt5 dev, Qt base 5 dev. Then you can create a Docker file that looks like this, uh, and then run Docker build, uh, give it um, this name. Uh, the dot at the end says to use the current directory as the, uh, to find the Docker file. Uh, and then you can use um, this as your base image instead of the bare minimal uh, base. Uh, similarly, if, you, um, if you're packaging new software and you're not sure exactly which uh, build dependencies you need, for example, upstream, upstream just says it needs Qt5, but you know, in Debian, we have a whole bunch of Qt5 development packages. So which ones do you need? So you can start off with a base guess. So you know, Qt base 5 dev is uh, probably a safe guess. And you know, maybe the thing that you're packaging uses WebKit. So you know, libqt5 WebKit 5 dev is probably a safe guess too. So then you try to build it. And then you know it gives you an error message because uh, it can't find something. Uh, so then you update your build depends, and now you can use um, you can use the dependency image that uh, Whale Builder created previously, and use that as your base package. Uh, and then so now it won't it won't reinstall Qt base 5 dash dev or lib Qt 5 webkit 5 dash dev again because it's already installed those. So it will just install the new um, build, depend build dependencies that you've added. Um, and that'll save you time. Oh, you, got, you can't see the hi text highlighting. And then so you, know, you can just repeat that as needed. Um, and I think that's about all the time we have. Um, so, are there any questions? If not, thank you for coming.